This is Brownies Podcast! Hey, we're back in Victoria after Adelaide almost killed me. I don't know about you two. John? Well, I'll tell you what, it's sensational, wasn't it? It was a footy trip, no doubt, with a little bit of work sprinkled in amongst it all. But, geez, it was exciting. We loved it. You survived four nights, Dino. Oh, I think I survived I can't three nights Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. That right. Dog was on the ground for 20 hours. And Adelaide nearly killed him. <laughs> I'll uh, go into that a little bit later. I yeah. can't believe you guys did four days. <laughs> it was an My- astonishing effort. Uh, you were nearly... Uh, you nearly died. You are close to death. Was I nearly there. best on ground Saturday night? He, he, made a quick, he made a late run, didn't he? A and late that... dash. Pang had been very good. Yeah. Thomas was a long way out in front. <laughs> Brown Dog, from a million lengths behind, he made a late dash. He was like Kiwi in the 83 Melbourne Cup. At that AFL event, or listen to my voice, at that uh, Flash AFL event during the Port game, mm. Port Dogs, yeah. we're watching it kind of civilised, but you know, Pretty well cooked, and you came in hot. Yeah, just in a t-shirt. I was underdressed. I'd been in the function an hour, and I'm still messaging JB saying, "Where are you? I can't find you." That's unbelievable. I said, "What is this man on?" Your text Uh, just said, "Where, where, 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 seven times in a row." Uh, The man was on ketamine, I reckon. Uh, (laughs) He he walked in. He walked in. He looked like he had 18 bottles of red. He had red wine teeth. I desperately wanted you to take you to the dentist and get a full teeth clean. Look, I'm amazing. Bad area. Uh, you're in bad areas, but geez, it was so much fun, Dino. Gather around, what a great success. Now, Gil and uh, Hot Pete, what's his, the, the mayor? P- Peter Malinowskis. The premier. Mr. Yeah, premier Mr. to us I'm, all. I'm yeah, calling Peter him, Melanoma. calling him Hot Pete. Yeah, so he, he's hot, he, he? Mate, him and Gil, I reckon, uh, Besties. metaphorically in bed together for a long time. Three now. years is a big commitment. Like, obviously, they, they got it this year. They put on a great show. I think I was expecting them to renew it for one year. Yeah. But to give them another three, significant. Well, I think you need it for investment. So the SA government's obviously going to really throw in now. They've got a they've got a war chest there, about a $40 million war chest, which they want to spend it. But they don't want to spend it on one year. They want it to be a legacy. So for the AFL to give them three years, I think that would have been to butter them up. So they'll spend the money and pay for a stadium out in the Barossa Valley because the AFL's plans are not only to have the festival of football around uh, the city of Adelaide, uh, in around that inner city, especially in the Adelaide Oval. But they want to take it out to the Barossa, especially, and create a bit of a festival out mm. there, like almost uh, a sub-festival out there as well. That'd so be good. they need the money to invest. Speaking of investment, a uh, source that I, I won't name uh, told me how much the clubs get. And yeah. $500,000 each. That, is, that, do you, is that right? Well, yeah. it, was, it was an extra round. Right. It was an extra round created. So last year, Gil was saying that he thought that they... The, the clubs last year had a couple of practice games and they are virtually belting each other up. They are going full 100 miles an hour. So he said, well, why don't we just create an extra round yep. um, and have one less practice game? Yeah, you guys are going to play like that and belt each other up. Create an extra round, a festival of footy like Magic Round in the Rugby League is going to be... You know, five hundred grand per club. The weather, um, the weather was a son of a bitch Saturday night, but that didn't seem to. She did well to hold up yeah. Adelaide Oval. It did not. Yeah, stop it, didn't, well, it didn't face us. You know, we were buying the glass at that function. And just think about all the, <laughs> think about all the, all the, the, the money it, it brought to the town of Adelaide. I was yeah. reading this this morning for the network of Carlton Footy Club wealthy business people yeah. went down to uh, the the Barossa, dropped one million dollars collectively Shit. on Penfolds wine. Are you, really? Is that a lie? Yep. Are you no, no, it's in the paper That's today. That's wild, One million dollars. They went down there and bought well? all the nice... No, nah, I've got a better water well than Jeez. that. But, so that's just one little group. Think about airfares, accommodation, mm. um, food, dinner, drinks, everything that comes with well, it. Well, they can't salary cap cheat anymore, so they've got to spend <laughs> their money on something, all those carbon blocks. I ate like uh, a pharaoh for three days. I kept eating at Fugazi because all these, <laughs> these free meals just kept landing in my lap and I didn't say no. And mind you, Fugazi to probably one of the highest rated restaurants in Australia. Let alone that Adelaide. Christ. Dom looked after us there, who's a part owner. He took us in there and uh, we had a good day. Didn't I we? had a 16 year old scotch. Yeah. yeah. The, the footy, the well, footy well, though. I, was, I, I didn't think Dom was happy to sort of cover. <laughs> <laughs> I think he looked a bit nervous when all of a sudden Dino was going for the 16 year old top shelf scotches. The, uh, I mean, not only, so we've spoken about off field shenanigans. I, I thought that on field it, it lived up to its hype. I mean, the Thursday yeah. night game was, was, was a cracker. Friday night game was was solid enough, but the, the games 
yesterday were really close, especially the, the Giants-Hawks game. That came down to almost the last kick of the game. And, and the Collingwood Saints game, um, you know, 1v2, that, that was that lived up to the hype, even though it wasn't a, a free-flowing, high-scoring mm. game. It was quite tactical, quite defensive, but really bloody close. Yeah. So for, Saints almost drew that. The ball was coming into their 50 in the, in the dying seconds. A defensive mark was taken by Collingwood. Roscoe, you go to the box... And he was laughing. Laughing. I mm. like that. It's like, Ross, he they, called himself mate. after the game. Yeah, he's come back uh, this time around, I think, a much more yeah. relaxed coach. Uh, it's not life and death anymore like it was at St Kilda at Fremantle. And I think he's enjoying his footy. Oh, yeah, it was it was fantastic. Obviously, they rolled the dice, and he was probably laughing they were in that situation. They actually could have pinched it, or at least could have pinched the draw. Anthony Hudson had packed his bags because yeah. we had to catch a flight to the airport. He was packing his suitcase five minutes to go in the last day, and Russell was doing the majority of the calling. Yep. Um, I, I think I think uh, Hutto had taken the headphones off, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he's had to reboot the engine because <laughs> he's got a bit of a lift. And then all of a sudden, game on. It was funny to watch, actually. Um, it was just... It was, it was quite ironic, actually, because the round was high scoring. The winners, six of the winners, scored over 100 points. Uh, it was ironic, then, that that was a real defensive battle on Sunday night between two very good teams. Oh, I think St Kilda are the real deal. Do you? I, don't, I don't think they can win it this year. Um, play finals, though? Oh, absolutely, they'll play finals. I don't think they're the real deal. I think young Caminiti will get rubbed out for a few weeks. You know, he whacked Murphy behind play. Murphy was concussed. But Memory will come back in next week. Jack Steele will come back in, their captain. Um, Max King will come back in in about six weeks. So I really think that they're a genuine team. Yep. You know, they run really well. You know, Ross is, will hold them very accountable with their defensive practices and structures and all those sorts of things because Collingwood are a genuine A-grade team in the competition. So um, there's not many standouts. Um, so the fact that St Kilda are able to stick with the Pies for the majority of the game and get back to within six points bodes well for their future for the rest of the year, I reckon. Right on. Now, i got some spicy news from our boss, Dell. Dog, because uh, you really? and not your fault. You you weren't with us much on the gathering. Not you, at all. You had serious commitments. I did. Yeah. Uh, but we cheekily floated that uh, asked the question: Do we need dog? Mm, I did see that. Yeah, that's I, not, I actually not... voted in the poll. <laughs> did I, you? Yeah, I voted to say yes. You still do. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think I, I I didn't have anything to do with this. I don't think. Well, the poll went up on two forums on Spotify and on Instagram. Well, this is thousands big. of votes. Uh, this is big. On, <laughs> How did I go on Instagram? Okay, forty seven percent. Want to replace him? Right. Oh. Okay. So. A strong fifty-three. Love you, there brother. There we go, oh. mate. There we go. No, he just no. God. So, is, are we just going with the majority here, Dino? Let's go to Spotify. Okay. okay. We've got some other okay. data. No doubt that that uh, that information will be a bit stronger in my defence. Sixty-seven percent want to. Keep him. Ah, there we go. Oh, wow. That's I great. think it's settled. The, the, the people have spoken. Dog's not going anywhere. The That's army right. has spoken. The degenerate army has spoken. And rightly so, Dog. You were magnificent in the 20 hours that you were on the ground. <laughs> over in Adelaide. Speaking of the degenerate army on WhatsApp, there was a photo of all you best on ground guys prepping before your, uh, <laughs> before your show. And someone's edited Dog on everyone's sheet. Everyone's sheet that they're prepping on. Have you seen what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> A picture of you from your menopause season. <laughs> your menopause season shoot. It's f***ing unbelievable. And it's great. I think it's it was good. Roy's uh, there, I think it was. A couple more... Um couple more abs would have been a bit nicer, you know what I mean? Mate. Oh, it was sensational. Right. Very um, good. What, hey, what about, um, just quickly, the Horn Francis situation? Oh, has so that Jason blown Horn up Francis, into something that doesn't need to be? Absolutely. So Ken Inkley gave him some, obviously, some strong feedback at three-quarter time. He'd struggled in the game, like a lot of his teammates, but he came out in the last quarter and he was one of the best players on the ground in that last quarter. He did a sensational job, obviously, uh, moving pictures of Ken Inkley grabbing him after the game and up close sort of almost saying, yeah, that's what you're capable of, son. And you handled the pressure of the booing and the crowd and the pressure that's come from all around in the last 12 months of football in his young career so far. So it's an interesting one. Then Ken Inkley addressed the press conference post-game where he said, everything's just got to stop. The pressure on this young fella's got to stop. The comments have to stop. The booing have to stop. I'm paraphrasing here. Yep. But obviously he was talking about the booing in general. Um, what did you think about that whole scenario? We were there. Yeah, we were. And look, he, he helped him win the game, um, which was which was amazing because as a 19-year-old uh, that hasn't played a lot of footy, sometimes if you're having a bad game, you, yeah. you start overthinking things and everything like that. So the fact that he could block out the last three quarters, come out when the game was at its fiercest and have his best quarter for the game and have an impact was significant. It's a great the, I mean, I love the staunch defence of a player 
from Ken Hinckley, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and that's that's what he does. That's why the players really like him. I had him at the Gold Coast, mm. and you wanted to play for Kenny because you knew that he was in your corner. They're playing for him. They're three yeah. and two, and they've had the toughest draw in footy. Yeah, now. they have. You and know, to come out three and two yeah. when you think about five minutes left in last week's game when yeah. they were behind against yeah. Sydney, so they've won the next couple, makes it, it turns yeah. their season around. Well, they were zipping five last year. Yeah. It could have been easily zipping five this yep. year. But the, the, the only thing I'll say is, one... Um, when you when you go and play AFL footy and you're a high draft pick and you make the decision to leave a club after 12 months and go home and everything that comes with that, um, it's divisive. You know, this game, footy, is much loved in this country because everyone is so passionate and so loyal to their clubs and we've all got an opinion. And the world, especially in sport, is based on heroes and villains. Mm. You go back all the way to the gladiators when they were in the Coliseum, mate. People are are cheering for who they love. Yeah, that's true. Now, by focusing so much on him, and people don't like being told what they can and can't do. We saw that with the Adam Good stuff. We saw that during the pandemic. Yeah. Right. There's a there's a natural reaction that, hey, we've got to stop putting pressure on this kid and stop booing him. Yeah. The crowd will go, no, nah, mm. that. I'll tell you yeah. what I'll do. I pay my money to go to the game, and I'll do what I want. And so it'll manifest into something that maybe more. He just needs to embrace it. Yeah. To block out. All the outside noise. And, and Kingy had a, had a crack at Kane Corns over this because, in a way, Kane Corns has built this young kid up to such a, a level by talking about him every darn radio, every um, platform he's on. And and with that comes a higher profile for someone that uh, is so new in the game. Exactly. So you reckon I, I he's just got to get on with it? I just yeah, embrace just, it. you got to embrace it, absolutely. And you know what? The best way to embrace it is do what he did in that last quarter. So clearly when the crowd's booing, he would have been having an effect on him. He goes out and gets the job done. Mm. In a critical last team quarter, helps his team win the game of football. Um, How do you tell and, Gino's... And look, at the end of the day, too, uh, people, half the people in the crowd booing, probably more, 90% of people when they're booing, they don't even know what they're nah. booing for. And We've seen it's that a, it's half a term of endearment, but how yeah. do you tell journos that are covering games yeah. to take the pressure off of a player? Like, how do you do that? Yeah. Either plays well or he doesn't play well. People are there to critique it, right? It's it's going to be a weekly thing for someone of his stature. Absolutely. I think a player like Nathan Buckley would have copped that early in his career. Oh, he certainly up, did. Uh, I did. If you turn up every week, uh, Joel Selwood was getting booed because he was ducking the head yeah. and getting mm. free kicks. I think ultimately, um, if you go about the game the right way, it'll turn. Uh, and you play well in big moments and you show some starch, it turns mm. because eventually you endear yourself to the crowd and the booing becomes the minority of the crowd to the point where it stops. So, well done to Ken Inkley for supporting his yeah. man. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to Jason Orn Francis. What he does on the field will mm-hmm. ultimately whether the booing continues yeah. or whether it stops. And don't whinge and don't complain. Just get your head down get your on bum with up it. and uh, Absolutely. Well, well some. Hey, what about the Wingard thing? You ever split your tongue, oh, don't you? Jesus. I've only heard about this off talk. Explain yeah. how you... Well, he, he copped a knock yesterday um, and he, he severed his tongue so oh. severely that it actually needs surgery. Jesus. Right? So he, he's like a, a snake. Oh. He's got the, the double-pronged tongue, which can work to your favour in some yes. degrees. Like if, if you've got two women and you're yes. trying to kiss yeah. them both on the dance floor, oh, yes. you know, point, your tongue don't. can go either way. But and outside gross. of that, it'd be a bit of a pain. Also, <laughs> you've got two women on the dance floor. <laughs> you're trying to give them a double capacity. Wait, how, did, how long do you think his tongue is, for fuck's sake? Like, just think <laughs> about well, it. Well, it could like be James <laughs> All right, dog uh, missed not one, but two planes in Adelaide. You hot mess. We're going to talk about Hard it to fathom. straight after the ads. This is Brownies Podcast. Welcome back to Brownies Podcast. We're back in uh, Victoria all together. Pomeroy's not here. He's on his honeymoon. God yeah, bless Yeah, where did he that. go to India, did he? Yeah, he did, man. Yeah, no. Nice. I think um, his wedding will last. I oh, marriage will last. Well, look, at the stats <laughs> say he's got half a chance. Okay. <laughs> but that's not hard. Well, similar stats to how whether Brown Dog stays or goes on Mate, this podcast. Now, tell us. Are we going to talk about his flights well, now? Well, just, uh, just quickly, too. I was a busy man. I had to work you over did. in Adelaide. Yeah. I didn't realise I had to have another job, though, as well, was tracking down my... Mark Rusciuto. Dino just wanted to have a scotch with Mark Rusciuto. He asked everyone in Adelaide where Mark Rusciuto lived, I which asked... I didn't think it'd be that difficult no. because it was the only house, only mansion in Adelaide that's got a motor around it. 
with angry alligators. Correct. I went into a bong shop and thought, they might know. Yeah. They did not know. So, so did you find him? A That's good what bong. we want to know. Oh, Rusciuto. Um, <laughs> well. He found both. I <laughs> found both, luckily. Because on the last morning where I was so hungover, I thought I was just going to die. I thought I was going to yeah. just pass away in my Uber. We get to the Alma. Brownie just says, meet me here. We're going to the Alma. I'm like, why the f***? We've been doing the podcast from the Hilton. Why are we doing it from the Alma? Get in there. Then I find out it's uh, Rui's pub. Mm, like, mm. all right, I can't get Rui for you, but I brought you to his pub. I gave him a scotch. I got the scotch there Perfect. just to help get him back up God. again. And then the uh, vacuum starts going off. A clean up, yeah. And the great man, Mark Rusciuto, <laughs> walks He's on the tools doing <laughs> the vacuuming. The vacuuming, can you oh, believe <laughs> it? Sits down, we had an amazing chat. I love that guy. He's, he's cool. A, he's a ripper, isn't he? When, when we he's play- like undercover boss, you know, when the, oh, when the yes. boss comes in and he yeah. starts doing all the other stuff. It's very, he, he didn't want that footage to go to his <laughs> missus either. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure he does a lot of that at home. He's got six kids. Imagine running six kids at home. The chat um, was going real. That, the chat yeah. was going real well, but then I played him his voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> and his energy shifted. I'm like, what am I? Done here. <laughs> He's going to choke me out and murder me. What about the uh, the famous story about the one Toyota bus trip that I wasn't on? I used to go every year, BT and Spud and organise. We travel around country Victoria, uh, Brown Dog, and we do the footy clinics, and then every night it turned into a pretty wild night. The one trip I wasn't on, the boys got the quaddy, quaddy yeah. paid forty five thousand dollars. They all had a share in it. It was unbelievable. It's hundred to one pop wins the last leg. <laughs> they get up. Well, then at the pub that night. Hodgy had yeah. a few too many. They'd all had a few too many. And Hodgy was annoying the shit out of Rue. So he started nibbling on his ear. And, oh, and Rue had said to him, stop doing that. Warning uh, was made. Warning was made. And then uh, he's done it he again. Him. He's done it again. So Rue has wrestled, got him in a headlock, nearly strangled him to death, then took him out on the street and bowled him over. Mm. Just dropped him. Jesus. So, mate, they were at it. They were at it. So... <laughs> Oh my God! So, he's uh, a madman, Ru. Right? He's a madman, Ru. And then he goes to lift back the hotel and showed us his new development, mate. Mate, he's a mogul. We got, is, we got yeah. in the Land Cruiser and it felt like Kevin Costner from Yellowstone was just yeah. driving around. I thought he goes, "I want to show you a couple of little development." I thought he's going to drive us past a couple of duplexes. <laughs> he takes us through past his hotel with seventy-five apartments, really, penthouses. <laughs> Gyms, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he's, he's a mogul. My God, he's a mogul of Adelaide. He goes, yeah, a couple of nervous moments during COVID. <laughs> he reckons, oh no wonder it's about a hundred million dollars. <laughs> he reckons, I legit thought I was going to live in a caravan. <laughs> High risk, high reward sort of investment. Oh my God. Oh, that's, oh, oh, that's good that you tracked year. him down. He yeah. said it'll be done for Gather Around next year. Yeah. yeah. Next to the Hackney Hotel, which is a very famous landmark over there. But, dog, you were the feature of. Uh, you were the feature of Gather Round over there, your 20-hour escapade. And actually, you are there for longer than 20 hours. You were <laughs> supposed to be only there for 20 hours. You ended up there for about 40 hours. What happened on So your, you left me at, what, 1.30 on Sunday morning, Saturday night? Sunday morning. We're having a couple of beers with BT, the big bear claw himself. You with Hamish McLaughlin in the yep. corner, and you were telling stories because I, I was on the other side of the room, and all I heard was your voice and you slapping the table to punctuate. <laughs> and then this happened. I, was, I had a fresh set of ears. Ellis like Nick. Jukebox, <laughs> just just put the money in and away he goes. Yeah, story. Well, BT and Hamish were winding me up, and our Nicholson obviously I don't yeah. know that well, yeah. so he was he was sitting there like a, a a kid at Christmas listening to all these stories that you know we won't ever be able to go to wear, but geez, they're good. And um, red wine was coming, and then amaretto sours, oh, yes. and then exp- and then I got on the espresso martinis, and JB left, you'd left. Yep. Um, I had a couple more drinks, got to about three o'clock. Staggered back to the Adelaide Oval Hotel, so it wasn't too far. I was actually mm. locked in, in the ground. I had to get mm. out of the ground, back around. What, so roughly, what time was that at the? I reckon it was quarter past three. Got Jesus, because I called my wife at uh, at three forty. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I was just she said, "Why yeah. would you call me yeah. FaceTime at three forty? And, and you would just left BT. I'm just going to put it on the record too. BT, he was with me. The serious chance of gout this week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> The red wine he oh, consumed mate, he's, on that trip. Yeah, he's, he, he's He's on Gout Watch. Mate, yeah. Was, he's definitely on Gout Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Down at Lawn this week. But sorry, Doc, we skipped sorry. over a, uh, a detail. He didn't just call his missus. He's decided to FaceTime. <laughs> I know. How dumb. How dumb. <laughs> how'd, you, especially, how'd you brush your teeth before you FaceTime? No, especially when I text her about midnight saying goodnight, babe, I'm off to bed. <laughs> 
that sort of that sort of gave me up a little bit that I might have stayed out for a couple more. Oh, so for some reason, I had a seven ten flight. Yeah, boarding at am am. Oh. Um, I didn't set an alarm. <laughs> Why would you? So uh, I woke up at eight forty. Yeah, and immediately went, "Holy shit." <laughs> That's a flat feeling, man. There's nothing worse than missing yeah. a flight. Well, see, sometimes you might wake up 20 minutes before the flight. That's and right. I'm going to so I knew I, I, a chance. I knew I was in a bit of trouble, but th- there, there has been times in the past where there's been a delay or something. Yep. So I quickly ordered an Uber. I got to Adelaide over. I got there. Uh, so I got to the airport at, from about 9.15. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't too far. And sure enough, my plane had left on time yep. at 7.15. So... I had to make a couple of panic calls to uh, Channel 7 and say, look, <laughs> um, uh, my, my plane's been delayed. Uh, I won't make it back for Box Hill and Collingwood. Delayed. Collingham. Interesting <laughs> word there. <laughs> I won't make it back for the VFL, which yep. starts at midday. Mm. Oh, like, fuck. I'm, disaster. Because <laughs> I've pride myself on, you know, like I can have a drink and that, but not, you, you're always front up. Have you ever missed a game before? No. Right. <laughs> Um, in seven years, yeah. right? So this is I'm breaking. Well, I thought, when I left him, I thought it was a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so, I must admit, I thought this is a reasonable, a reasonable chance. That this is going to happen. So I, I ring, I ring um, someone that control well, organises the flights and everything. Yeah. Um, and and uh, she said, look, no worries. Uh, ca- we can't get you on a, a Virgin flight. Mm-hmm. They're all booked out, but we can get you on a twelve thirty Jetstar. Mm-hmm. It's like, no worries. I'm at the airport now. I walk into the Virgin Lounge. I, I, I make my way in there, even though I told them I was flying with a rival network or company. They let me in. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I had a couple of hours to kill until sort of I boarded my, my next flight, my second flight. Mm-hmm. So I had a coffee, some water, um, you know, just tried to make sense of what had unfolded the mm-hmm. night before. Mm-hmm. At 10 past 12, I think... Virgin, a lot very much for having me. And I walked to gate 25, which is up the back end yeah. of mm-hmm. Adelaide Airport. I wait in line. Mm-hmm. We get to the front. She says, uh, the, Where's your ticket? Do you, do you scan? Or you? I went, Oh, fuck. I forgot to check in. I haven't checked into this flight. She said, What? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, uh, someone's booked it for me and, and I, I was already in here, so I didn't have to. And I, I didn't have a phone to. She said, Well, the gate. It closes 30 minutes late, right? So you can't get on this flight. So I missed. Is that because of your check in baggage? No, I only no. had carry on. No, he'd actually hadn't for checked the manif- in. I d- had never logged in oh, for shit, the flight. I'd man. never logged in. So Did you think you're flying in your own charter flight? Did you? Oh, you just dog. fucking walk on the plane. I'd had a brain fade. I just completely forgot. So, so I, didn't, I didn't have a ticket and. It was within 30 minutes of the plane leaving, but, so they, they closed. Oh, so my confusion is, so someone's booked it for you. Surely that seat's still reserved. Can't they just go click, 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 you're checked Not in. 30 no, minutes. You've got to check in before you the have 30 to minutes check up, in. even if you don't have baggage. Jeez. So that's the second flight. I'm not, I can't get on. I have to walk back out of the airport. Oh. I have to go and re- I would have loved to camera on him at this stage. <laughs> oh my Rebook a third flight. Yep. A third flight, which was for 2.20, oh. which then got delayed until 3.15. We didn't la- land back here in Melbourne until 5 p.m. <laughs> that is... <laughs> <laughs> Mate. Mate, you could have... You could have come to the Alma with us. Oh, I, I, I could have gone and watched the Hawks Giants game. I could have done all sorts of shit, right? Oh man! I had a horrendous day just at this airport. Missed two flights, oh, you poor and that's bastard. what I'm going to remember. Gather round. For. <laughs> that's the legacy, and it was all self inflicted. Did you have your head down? Because you pride yourself on a positive person, your strong body language. Yeah. Even against you know when the world's going against you, did you drop your head at any stage? Nah, no, I was pretty. Uh, no, nah, I was okay. I was, I was, I was pretty. I, I was content. I yeah. knew I just completely. Yeah. Um, he was still pissed, Dan. He was. <laughs> anyway, it was good. It was good times, and uh, and yeah, I've never missed two flights before in the one hit. Unbelievable. Hey, ads back in but, a second. But yes, what? I'll tell you what. What? The fact that you rocked up here at uh, ten past eleven and thought it was twenty to uh, eleven because you're still on Adelaide time <laughs> is way more. Up than what I did, mate. Because you've been back in Melbourne for a while now. Uh, back in a second. Uh, this is Brownies Podcast. Welcome back to Brownies Podcast. Uh, an incredible last five days it's been. It's just a footy celebration. And we're back in Adelaide next year. It's a footy year. trip within uh, the, the round of footy, isn't it, for us, for us commentators? Absolutely. It was awesome. I reckon there'll be more people want to go next year. So mm, they'll no be able to get organised and think Adelaide will be set up better. 
even though they did a great job the first time, they only had four or five months to organise it. So I think it becomes a bit of a annual calendar thing for everyone yeah, all around yes. Australia. Dino, just make sure that you don't book a wedding mm. uh, on the Friday before the gather- middle of gather round. Well, me well, getting married is a very long long odds. Uh, uh, well, you never know after Wednesday night's <laughs> shenanigans. That was fantastic. good for you, mate. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. It was good. Uh, uh, yeah, Brody, actually... Bro, he's been a non-starter the last few times, so we might need to put it up on Instagram as to whether he stays. Don't worry about dog staying. Good idea. Yeah. Is Pomeroy's head on the chopping block? It could be, mate. I think the best podcast we've done has been without him here. <laughs> hey, uh, it's time for What A World. Yes. yes. A pair of former Oklahoma County jail guards have been sentenced, right, over repeated punishment of inmates by using the popular child song, Baby Shark, right? <laughs> Prosecutors said that these two, they handcuffed inmates, forced them to stand in stress positions for hours on end while repeatedly playing the child song on loop, <laughs> Baby Shark. That's f- So both jail guards have been fined $2,000, placed on probation for twos, and have now been banned from ever working in uh, law enforcement or the corrections facility because of that form of punishment. What a world! the inmates. What this a, isn't a bad song. What a great idea. Yeah. That's a fantastic addition. How long until you crack, JP? How long until you crack, here in Australia? How long till you crack doing oh, that? Oh, yeah, not long. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't last long at all <clears> after <throat> my traumatic uh, fatherhood bringing our three lunatics up Doc, I'd get through two hours of that, I reckon. Yeah. I reckon, and then, then my so, nose would start to bleed. <laughs> well, you'd start to sort of bounce yes, along. Yes, you bounce with it. And then you turn. But you say they put him in a stress stance. Yeah. What is a stress well, stance? Well, I think it must be when you're standing in a like in like a squat position. Maybe you're back yeah. against the wall and you, you can't move and quite quickly oh, gotcha. you'd, you'd be cast. And that, they'd be shackled in that as well. After about two hours, I think I'd be like Mark Rusciuto sitting in the bar with Luke Hodge chewing on my ear. <laughs> I think I'd just eventually turn and would knock him out. Well, my name... <clears throat> excuse me, my, my throat is cooked for some reason. My name is Dean Thomas and these are my observations for... Round five, gather round, one of the greats. Before going to Adelaide, I was told it was a marathon, John. Yeah, and they were true. And I don't know why I treated that first night like a 100 meter sprint. (laughs) I also learnt that if you're staying in a hotel room that isn't yours, that you need the little plastic key (laughs) if you go on the other side of the door. And I also learnt that the hospitality workers in Adelaide are saints. Because I spent two long minutes half naked in an elevator with a stranger, a very supportive stranger, who found me that hotel room. Thank you, Adelaide. I also learned that taking Jonathan Brown to a Coyote Ugly style bar called Shotgun Willies is the smartest thing you can ever do because he'll embrace it as if he's a NASCAR driver from America. He's behind the. I felt like I was cold trickle. <laughs> He's behind the bar pouring beers. And the other thing I learnt from Adelaide is never to f- with Mark Rashuda. <laughs> well said. God bless you all. Was, See you, degenerates. What a great just quickly, weekend. Was the whole week complimentary? Yeah. Because I did so didn't pay for a thing. <laughs> So, uh, gather round was free for everyone. I think it was free drinks at Shotgun Willie's for everyone. <laughs> for everyone, no. For Garzi. Only John. Adelaide Oval. For Garzi. Like, I my, asked for a scotch. Our money Gazi. was no good in Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> See you, degenerates.